So, uh, today is the last part of this module 8 in which I will uh, discuss the distribution uh, system automation and smart grid. Uh, in fact, in my last lecture I uh, introduce uh, the concept of uh, this automation and smart grid and we will proceed to that uh, to understand that what are the changes required uh, to, to convert a traditional distribution networks to a smart network. Okay. So, in, in my last lecture I discussed the comparison uh, between the smart grid and existing grids as far as the different features are concerned and also I discussed the different fundamental building blocks of a uh, smart grid which includes different building blocks for example, distribution automation substation as automation distribution management system or DMS, smart metering system and meter data management system. So, these building blocks we will try to describe in more detail in this lecture. Okay. So, let us start with this distribution automation. Okay. Although there is a IEEE standardized definition which is mentioned in the Gonen book uh, is there, but as such for this kind of system there is no formal definition, but IEEE and its task force has probably uh, defined it in a standardized form which says that uh, a system that enables an electric utility to remotely monitor, coordinate and operate uh, distribution companies in real time mode from remote locations. Okay. So, that is called distribution automation and this automation also includes distribution system monitoring and automated metering infrastructure. Okay. So, this all these building blocks we, which we are talking about they are not isolated building block, they are basically overlapped with each other. So, they, they are uh, functionalities are overlapping those things I will be discussing today. So, what are the benefits of distribution automation uh, which the utility uh, can get that it will have released capacity reduced of energy losses, improvement of reliability, extension of the life of the equipment and utili effective utilizations of assets which are all these positive points uh, for a electric utility. Okay. And these are the drivers which drives the need of this distribution automation. Okay. One is of course, that uh, increase in uh, power demand worldwide okay. and also increased energy usage per capita. Okay. So, it is because of the increase in uh, per capita energy usage, the energy demand is increasing in a rapid space uh, nowadays. Okay. And also, the need of uh, higher efficiency, reliability and power quality. So, previously whatever equipment uh, the customers are using, uh, now these are completely changed whether you are talking about the lighting uh, equipment, whether you are talking about the air conditioning system. So, all these things are rapidly changing okay? and thereby uh, the need of this uh, efficient power supply, need of the reliable power supply, need of clean power supply is required. Okay. And also we have many loads which are sensitive loads. Now, what do you mean by sensitive loads? I discuss in my uh, module 1 that there are some loads which are <coughs> very much voltage sensitive okay. and even uh, very, very short period of time voltage disturbance may cause uh, total interruption of those loads. Okay. You may talk about uh, uh, in a hospital where different kind of life uh, saving equipment are there. So, this, this are can be considered as the sensitive load. Okay. Similarly, uh, our air traffic control is a kind of example of sensitive load where we cannot tolerate even a few uh, microsecond of interruption. Okay. So, similar kind of loads are increasing nowadays, even our computer is a sensitive load and in all of our houses we have nowadays computing facilities okay. and uh, data centers are also an, ex, uh, an example of sensitive loads. So, these types of sensitive voltage sensitive loads are increasing in a rapid pace 
and also we uh, need uh, to uh, you know reduce or minimize the capital expenditure which is our goal in power distribution system planning I discuss performance based rates uh, this will yet to come and also increasing this renewable energy which I discussed in my last module this is also a driver nowadays to, to automate the system and also availability of real time analysis tool in for a faster decision making. So, if we want to make use of those uh, systems we have to automate the whole process. Okay. So, these are the control functionalities of uh, distribution automation load switching, pit load pricing, load shedding, uh, automated load shedding of course, this uh, cold load pickup, reconfiguration, voltage regulation, transformer load management, feeder load management, capacitor control those things we at this point we know many things. And also this uh, presence of storage uh, fault, automated fault detection, load studies, condition and state monitoring. Uh, automated meter reading, uh, remote service connection and switching. These are the some of the functionalities of distribution automation. Okay. And if we can vertically divide into the whole task of distribution automation, then we will be having one task as distribution automation, another is distribution system monitoring. Under distribution automation, we have uh, this uh, medium voltage monitoring station switching switch operation, reclosure automation and regular uh, your regulator automation. Okay. So, those who, which are associated with the substation those needs to be automated. Similarly, in distribution system monitoring uh, we need to have some monitoring process in uh, this pole top of distribution equipment. Then we need many sensors uh, to be deployed in the overhead and undergrind distribution lines and also we need to have a fault localization, automated fault localization and detection process. Okay. Now, next building block that I, I am talking about for a typical smart or typical automated distribution system operation is uh, distribution management system and its acronym is DMS. In fact, lot of research is going on on this particular aspect. Okay. Now, let us see that what are the features this distribution management system has. One is called uh, fault detection, isolation and service restoration. This is an Im important thing in order to improve this reliability of the operation. Then topology processor. In topology processor, once uh, this should uh, automatically trace out the distribution network topology with the help of different sensors deployed in different part of the system. Even uh, operator uh, does not know um, anything about this topology uh, with the with the help of the sensors one can trace out that what is the topology of the network, what is the structure of the network uh, at present. Okay. Then optimal network reconfiguration which I already talk about that uh, network reconfiguration uh, it is a area of uh, research in power distribution systems and it uh, incurs lots of benefits okay, in terms of this power or energy loss re reduction uh, or alternatively improve the energy efficiency uh, in terms of the service restoration and many aspects in terms of the improvement of the reliability and many aspects. So, those uh, things are also part of this distribution management system. Then uh, next is uh, integrated volt var control IVVC in short. So, this is basically required in order to improve the uh, voltage profile and in order to reduce the network losses as well as in order to uh, have a better voltage regulation. Okay. And we have many uh, sort of uh, voltage uh, control devices which include uh, traditional capacitor bank to uh, traditional on load trap changer uh, uh, of the transformer located in the distribution substation and also there are many others uh, voltage controlling device, voltage regulator deployed in different part of the networks and uh, maybe the different others which I will be discussing today. And also the switch order management this is another uh, you know feature of DMS, dynamic load modeling and load estimation 
Uh, so, this is similar to you know this estimation of the network topology with the help of DMS subroutine one can uh, also uh, determine their uh, this or estimate the individual loads in, in a particular feeder and also uh, dispatch charge training simulator. This is a simulator to simulate this performance of a network during abnormal or normal condition. Also, it has a short circuit analysis capability, this relay protection coordination system and optimal capacitor placement, okay, which I was also talking uh, talked about in module 5. Okay. Now, these are the limitations of uh, traditional approaches for volt power control. What do you mean by traditional approaches? Traditional approaches are deployment of capacitor bank and traditional approaches are also make use of uh, on load tap changer. Okay. They have some uh, uh, limitations. So, these limitations are uh, they have certain capability of loss reduction and also they have some switching problem. Okay. And uh, this monitoring the switched capacitor bank performance is also a limitation and voltage regulation problem when large DG unit is connected. So, that is another problem uh, when large DG connected to a network. Now, uh, for operating a distribution network in an automated environment, one of the tools the distribution network utility use is called supervisory control and data acquisition system or in short it is acronymed as SCADA. Now, what is SCADA? The SCADA is a equipment or procedure for controlling one or more remote stations from a master control station. This is again not formal definition, but one can understand uh, what is SCADA. So, it is basically an uh, equipment or it is a app procedure uh, for controlling one or more remote stations uh, by sitting in a master stas control station which may be located few kilometer away from this remote station. Okay. So, it is a procedure to remotely control many sort of uh, equipment of under a distribution network. Okay. And this SCADA includes several uh, uh, things which include digital control uh, equipment, sensors or and telemetry equipment, communication which is a backbone of this SCADA system and here it is talking about two way communication. How it works I will talk, come to that and also we need to have a master station and many remotely controlled stations. Okay. So, this SCADA digital control equipment include these computers and the terminals for data display and data entry and many sort of sensing and telemetry equipment which include sensors uh, which are deployed in different part of a network, digital to analog or analog to digital converters whenever required, actuators, relays etcetera and also which needs to uh, operate the circuit breaker remotely. Okay. Now, communication equipment includes modems for transmitting digital data and communication link. Okay. So, this is a typical uh, you know schematic diagram of a uh, SCADA system. Okay. SCADA as I said it is a backbone of automation of a distribution system. Okay. Now, in this SCADA system this part is the uh, this part is your master station, this is the master station and this part is basically a uh, remote station and in between them they are may be few kilometer uh, distance. So, they are uh, located few kilometer, few kilometer distant, few kilometer distant, okay, these two. Now, what are there in the master station? Typically, we have a uh, you know computerized master station where we have displays of different data and also alarm annunciators and there is a provision to input the data. Okay. And what is there in the remote station? First of all, we have different measuring and sensors. Okay. So, in order to have a uh, in order to measure and sense the operating conditions of the different part of the network, which may be uh, the voltage sensor, current sensor, etcetera. 
Okay. And this sensor or uh, measuring equipment, if they are of digital, they can directly uh, feed this digital uh, data to this remote station CADA control part. And if they are analog data, then we need to convert this analog data to digital data by using uh, analog to digital converters. Okay. So, these are the uh, things which uh, are basically measuring data and sensors to indicate the status and this uh, state of the system. Apart from that, there are uh, some control actions or set point control generators. Uh, which basically uh, whose role is to generate the desired set point to various uh, you know controllable uh, equipment. Also, there are some comment uh, on and off state changer control for example, capacitor control where we have either switch on or switch off uh, a typical capacitor bank. Okay. So, this uh, you know this is a, a remote station and this is a master station. So, operating this remote station from this master station which may be few kilometer distant away which may be located at few kilometer distant away is a process of SCADA and this is what the communication link and we need a modem in order to have this proper communication uh, between the master station and all the remotely uh, controlled stations. Okay. So, these are the typical functions, SCADA functions, which include control and indication uh, of uh, various switches, uh, state indication. Uh, for example, uh, if there is a, we have this cooling uh, of a transformer by using blower. So, this operation of this blower on and off can be uh, properly indicated, which is an important parameter for a distribution network operator control without indication that is capacitor switched in and switch out, set point control which I was talking about. The, this includes the nominal voltage for automatic tap changer, then alarm sensing uh, which includes that fire and any sort of undesired parameters and uh, then uh, initiation and recognition of different sequences and data equation for metering equipment. Okay. Now, uh, being a SCADA planner one need to consider various tasks, uh, which includes the this this uh, the task where we need to reduce the substation cost, design cost, we need to reduce the substation operating cost, we need to reduce the total operating cost of the whole network and we need to reduce the functionalities of non SCADA functions. So, those are the some of the things. Uh, one needs to un, uh, take, in, take into consideration before uh, deploying this card. Now, there is another module or building block of this typical automated system that is called Volvar control okay. and SCADA can be used as one of the approaches for Volvar control. Okay. Now, how SCADA can be used? Uh, so, Volvar control is typically I discussed in my uh, discussion with, with reactive power compensation in module 5 and this is uh, means I discussed uh, this capacitor placement as one of the uh, reactive power compensator, but this is not only uh, this uh, reactive power compensators, there might be various other devices in order to uh, improve the voltage. And that uh, process uh, uh, needs a total proper coordination uh, of various devices which will be participated in this voltage control and that process is called Volvar control. Okay. And uh, this control is handled uh, by two separate system, independent system. One is VAR dispatch system uh, to improve which are used to improve the power factor and to reduce power losses. For example, this capacitor bank. And there are some uh, systems which are used uh, for voltage control. Okay. For example, this uh, OLTC, OLTC stands for uh, onload tap changer okay. and or, or voltage regulator. These are used to improve the voltage uh, or in order to regulate the voltage of the network. And uh, also there is a process called conservation voltage reduction. This is used to purposefully reduce the demand for some of the loads when uh, you know 
that the, their voltage variation is very wide. Okay. But uh, this integrated volt bar control optimization is another domain of research, okay, uh, which requires devising an appropriate approach to, to control or uh, to determine the optimal coordination of the many uh, such kind of volt bar, many such kind of systems which, is, which are used for uh, this volt bar improvement. Okay. So, there are some of the utility specific objectives, uh, one is minimizing this power demand in terms of total customer demand and distribution system power losses, minimizing wear and tear in the, in the control equipment and maximizing the revenue. Those things I discuss, some of the things I already discussed. So, this is a schematic of integrated volt bar control optimization. Okay. So, if you look at, so this is our uh, distribution SCADA. Okay, and which is connected to many sort of volt bar uh, system, which include uh, substation OLTC, on load tap changer, substation capacitor banks, line, uh, voltage regulator, controllable uh, volt bar control devices. Okay. And their set point is decided by sitting in this uh, you know uh, master station. Okay. And in order to decide the set point, we need to have, uh, you need to get the data of different sort of states of the system, which we can get from this distribution system model by using power flow approach and by using a uh, different uh, type of uh, optimization approach. Okay. Now, next uh, building block for uh, automated uh, distribution system operation is called is uh, substation automation. Okay. Substation automation consists of the following uh, attributes, one is called data processing application, one is called data collection application, another is called control database. In data processing application, uh, this software application provides various users access of data of the substation controller. Okay. So, we have uh, various data uh, collected from the sensors with the use of this CADA system this data need to be appropriately processed okay and this processing happens to be task of a substation controller okay so data collection application this is another software application which is used to access other system and component data and also there is a control database okay now use of scada in substation automation so as i said scada is a backbone of automated distribution system operation and it is uh, useful for uh, substation automation as, as well. So, we can do many uh, things by using the SCADA system, which include automated bar sectionalizing, automatic reclosing after a fault, fault reporting, protection, transformer load balancing, voltage and reactive power control, etcetera. Okay. Now, in advanced development of integrated substation automation, we have ID. The concept of ID is already discussed in my last lecture. It is a system having uh, some processor which can uh, receive or send data, which can communicate data. Okay. So, this ID, there are um, many research going on development of this ID and its integration in order to have a better substation automation. Okay. And what are the tasks of IDs we have in a substation automation process? There are multiple tasks which include integration of uh, multiple function into a single equipment, self check and diagnostic or self filling process, this communication interface, uh, ability to uh, store historical data and there are many others. Okay. As I said, there are many research papers reported last few years on the development of IDs, which is basically aimed at development of integrated single piece of equipment of course, it is microprocessor based device in order to have various you know properties which include protection, which include metering, which include load management etcetera. Okay. So, this is a typical uh, you know schematic for substation controller, uh, there are many things uh, connected with this which include uh, graphical user interface, communication protocol, substation load reporting, programmable logic. A digital fault recording, etcetera, 
and also there are some data collection applications for example, uh, input output modules, intelligent electronic device ID I was talking about uh, and many others. So, this is a schematic of substation automation system, so which include different power system equipment, ID implementation, ID integration and utility enterprise system. And this is another schematic for the substation automation system. You can see here, uh, this I also took from this uh, golden book, where we have different users which are connected to this uh, two control buses. And in one, this uh, one control buses, we have this different substation input output devices, which may be of different substation stakeholder equipment like transformer, circuit breaker switches, capacitors, batteries, etcetera and how they are you know connected and operated with the help of this CADA system. Now, another domain of this uh, smart grid research is automated metering uh, system. So, we have basically electromechanical meters previously okay, and this would be uh, changed to one way automated meter reading. Okay this makes uh, you know uh, collection of data much, much easier than the manual collection of the recorded data. Okay. Then the next phase is smart metering, where we have two way com automated metering, uh, meter reading infrastructure okay. and automated meter reading infrastructure is called AMI, it is acronymed as AMI, which is another made of advancement. So, here there is no communication here there is no communication. Here we have uh, one way communication, here we have bidirectional communication and then uh, after deploying so, we can move forward to the uh, domain of the smart grid. So, if you look at this characteristics, this is again I took from this Gonen book, you can see the functionality will increase uh, from one step to another step and so as the return on the investment. Okay. So, may be that deployment of this uh, smart grid would be much costlier than the traditional operation of the uh, power network, but it may uh, result in higher return in future. Okay. So, this automated metering infrastructure or AMI is another domain of this research in, in smart grid of power system higher utilities can reach to their goals of the load management and increased revenues. Okay. So, in fact, in module 1, I was talking about different load management system okay. and this is only possible if we have this uh, automated metering infrastructure. Okay. So, with AMI technology, power companies not only will collect the instantaneous information of individual and aggregated demand, but also can modify the energy consumption. Okay, so, these things I discussed in and that modification will have uh, multiple benefits. It can result in peak saving, it can result in value filling, it can result in many other aspects. Okay. So, a smart grid requires a uh, automated metering infrastructure and these are the typical tasks of automated metering infrastructure network. Uh, it needs to be connected with operation of the switches, capacitor banks, distributed regulators, real time metering and alternative point of supply. Okay. Now, finally, we have arrived at different some of the steps to move forward from the present day distribution network to a more advanced uh, or automated or smart power distribution network. The first step is to design information model based on overall requirement of a smart distribution system. Then second step is to establish substation data integration and associated application. Step 3 is feeder automate automations for selected applications, uh, which includes that automatic reconfiguration and volvar control. The next step is advanced metering integration. Uh, the next step is having energy management, optimization, risk assessment, advanced equipment diagnostics and final step is to interface the DER and the advanced energy management and optimization and real and reactive power management capability. So, step by step a network needs to be converted to a smart grid as already I mentioned that a smart grid is not a replacement of the grid, uh, it is basically uh, upgradation of a grid. And in fact, 
it can be selectively done uh, based upon the investment ability of an utility. So, this is a figure which gives you again similar kind of advancement starting from this one way communication to two way communication deployment of smart sensor and distributed control. This is possible by using AMI automated metering infrastructure and next step ahead is basically smart grid which needs network management intelligent application and intelligent agents. Okay. And of course, their functionalities uh, will also increase so as the uh, investment and return on the investment. Okay. So, this is a typical flowchart of volt power control. Basically, uh, if you do this literature review on uh, automated volt power control, you can get a lot of papers reported last few years. Uh, we have different control schemes as well, which include centralized control, distributed control, decentralized control. Okay. And they are having some uh, advantage disadvantages. For example, this computation in centralized control is very high, whereas decentralized control is very low. Okay. Communication facilities need is high in uh, centralized control, low in decentralized control and so and so. So, difficulty in implementation in centralized is low, but decentralized is high. In fact, centralized control is basically uh, with the deployment of SCADA, one can uh, make decision from the uh, master stations. We can uh, decide the set point and then they can effectively transmit to the remote stations. Whereas, in decentralized control, the control operation uh, of the individual equipment would be decided at the individual equipment point of point uh, without transmitting to the uh, a centralized point. Okay. So, this needs some sort of uh, you know upper level controllers and also in the next phase of this volt bar control with the deployment of DER in particular, we have many um, uh, stakeholders for participating in uh, you know volt bar control. Uh, not only we have this uh, capacitor or that OLTC control, but we have many other stakeholders which include the inverters that we use in the photovoltaic system. Also, if we have any uh, sort of uh, synchronous distributed generation system. So, they can also uh, participate in automated volt bar control and to have a you know effective uh, coordination we need a specific approach and based on that there are several research going on. So, these are the some of the challenges for the application of smart grid. One is lack of transmission capacity, difficulties in grid operation in a competitive market, power system uh, redefinition of power system planning determination of optimum uh, mix of the uh, different uh, sensing communication and control hardware and coordination of centralized and decentralized control. So, these are the some of the areas in which uh, research is going on on the smart grid in order to make the distribution networks or power networks to a smart grid. One uh, area is of infrastructure point of view which include to deploy uh, proper infrastructure uh, proper communication infrastructure, information, uh, integration, security okay. and also another is application and technology point of view with the help of new technologies, new applications etcetera. Okay. So, all this uh, you know uh, related uh, data and uh, you know, approaches I take from this Turan Gonen book that is electric power distribution system engineering. Okay. So, with this I uh, will stop uh, this course. Thank you very much for attending this course once again.